Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Triple D. So thanks for being with us here today. So we are continuing onwards with chapter 11 of the Westminster Confession. We are in justification. Uh, so a great doctrine. If you are Reformed, you usually have a good love for this doctrine. Yeah. Or if you're a Lutheran too, I suppose. You know, they, they have that Luther guy yeah. as their you know, head honcho. So I imagine that they would like this doctrine too a little bit. They might have a few quibbles here and there, but you know, we're all on the same side, of course, here. But thank y'all for being with us here today. So we're glad that, to be with you. Uh, we pray that this will be edifying for you. And we pray that this show is edifying for you as well. Uh, you know, we don't do this just because we have nothing to do on a Friday morning. Uh, we've got plenty of other things that we could do. I've got lots of school books that need reading. Steve has lots of th uh, duties that need to be done. Yep. Lots of numbers to be crunched as well with yep. his business. Yep. So, uh, you know, but we hope that this is edifying for you. You know, we don't have a Sunday school curriculum necessarily here. So this is envisioned as a little bit of a supplement for that. Uh, so we can discuss some things that are very meaty and weighty. So let's jump on into our lesson yep. for today then, steve -O. So we are yep. in section two of chapter 11. So we're going to be talking about faith today. Now, as an evangelical, faith usually is a big subject that we like to discuss. So let's talk about faith a little okay. bit. We read, Faith thus receiving and resting on Christ and his righteousness is the alone instrument of justification. Yet it is not it it is not alone in the person justified, but is ever accompanied with all other saving graces, and is no dead faith, but worketh by love. So see, we've had a lot of discussion about what it means to have faith. Some mm -hmm. people will say, uh, certain people will say you need to have faith in our government. Certain people will say, I need to have faith that that bridge is not going to fall when yeah. I'm driving my truck across. Yeah. Uh, but what exactly is faith, especially as the Bible teaches us? What is faith? Faith is resting in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and the work that he has done for us. Mm. Simply put, and very, very good, too. Uh, so, yes, I would say that there's also, if you read John Calvin or the other Reformed writers, uh, you'll see that there's usually three parts of faith. So there's uh, a notion, sense of it, that's knowing the right things. Now, if you're believing that Jesus was a unicorn, you're not believing in Jesus correctly. You could have all the faith that you want to in that unicorn to save you, but it's not true nonetheless, though, because you are you have the wrong object of faith. There's also an ascension to that. You have to confess that these things are true. You have to confess that Jesus is Lord. But there's also another part of it, too, and this is what the Latin term is fiducia. That means trusting in. So you are trusting in Christ, as you said as well. You're actively holding on to him. You're trusting in him. You're trusting that he is going to save you in the end, as well as promises to save you now. And at the judgment seat of God, you know that that's going to be my advocate. That's mm -hmm. my lawyer. I'm trusting in his righteousness that he's imputed to me. He's lived the life I could not live. He's died the death that was reserved for me, and that he is my hope and my strength. He is the rock on which I'm standing. So yes, so Steve, therefore... There's, there was a movement in, uh, in the Puritan era as well. It has a long name that I'm not going to trouble you with, but is faith simply then assenting to a few facts? No, because facts won't save you. Mm. Uh, the, the fact that there's, it's a fact that Jesus died. Mm -hmm. That can be proved. It's a fact that he rose again. That could be proved. Mm -hmm. But just knowing those facts will send you to hell. Mm-hmm. You've got to take the next step and trust in those facts, the Christ of the facts, mm. and have inside. I believe that he died. I believe that he rose again, and he rose again to forgive me and cover my sins. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. So take that a little bit, and let's run with it. So what right. is the difference then between a saving faith, a justifying faith that justifies us in the sight of God, and a demonic faith, because the scripture is clear, yeah. especially, you know, when Jesus was walking around doing miracles and casting out demons, the demons would cry out, have mercy mm -hmm. on us, O son of God, or they would come up to him and say, I know who you are, O Jesus most high. Yeah. Now, what is the difference then? Because they're exhibiting a kind of faith there. But what is the difference then between a saving faith and a demonic faith? Well, even the devil believes. Mm -hmm. If you could ask the devil, do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? And he'll say yes. Mm -hmm. Do you believe, devil, do you believe, Satan, that Jesus died and rose again to save sinners from their sins? Yes, I believe that. Mm -hmm. Then take the next step. Do you, Satan, believe in Jesus and that he died for you? And he's going to say, no, I won't go there. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, demons believe in Jesus, too, very clearly. Uh, some of those demons had better faith at time than the disciples did. Yep, you know, did. you're preaching on the, the episode of uh, you know, the life of Peter, and one of those things that Peter says is, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, yep. in Matthew. Mm -hmm. But immediately yes, afterwards, right. he rebukes <laughs> Jesus for saying, I'm going to die. And Jesus looks at him and says, get thee behind me, Satan. Yep. You know, so immediately, just that <laughs> turn right there. So you know, the faith that he has is so weak. It's yeah. true faith. It's saving faith, of course. Yeah. But it is so weak that Christ is saying, you're acting just like the devil at this point. You're trying to hinder my mission. But see, I, I in my own sinful nature, we I'm, do so, that I'm so encouraged by that we, because I'm thinking, I'm, hey, that's like me. I do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so it is it is very humbling and telltelling, that's for sure. But yes, demons... And everyone, to an extent, has certain faith in God, or has a faith of a kind. They're, they're all, everyone is trusting in something, uh, but they're not trusting in either the right thing, or they're mm -hmm. not actively placing their faith in Christ Jesus to save Well, them. in Judas. Look at Judas himself. Absolutely. And how many people he fooled. Mm -hmm. He fooled John and Peter. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Couldn't fool Christ, of course. That's right. And he must have been out there. Did he teach? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did he pray? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. When Christ sent them out to heal and to cast out demons and to preach the gospel, Judas went with them. That's right. I mean, he was doing those things. Yeah. You know, in Matthew chapter 7, uh, Christ even says, In the last days there will be many who say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in right. thy name and in thy name cast out many demons and do many great works in your name? Well, that's humbling for us, and this is, is just humbling. a side point. This is an application of that yeah. faith, too. And that should be a warning sign to all believers mm. to make sure that you have the real faith mm -hmm. and not just the facts Absolutely. or a devilish faith. Absolutely. Because the devil wants to counterfeit anything and everything Christ does. Absolutely. He did that with Moses uh, when they threw down the staves, and the Egyptian staves also turned to snakes. Yes. He was trying to yeah, replicate that and to fool everyone, yeah. whereas Moses is, is obviously superior because it eats the other two. So, therefore, Steve, let's turn it a little okay. bit, too. Now, does faith merit justification? If I have enough faith, therefore, will God justify me? I know. That's a strong no, because if you think about it, then that means that even our faith is works-based. Mm -hmm. And if I work more than you do, mm -hmm. I, can, I can be saved. I can have faith where you haven't done that, so that builds me up. Mm -hmm. I have the right kind of faith you don't have. If if faith comes from God as a gift from God, then it's humbling mm -hmm. to me to know that the Lord has given me that faith, and that will make me fall down on my knees. Absolutely. You know, we went through Ephesians 2.8 mm -hmm. uh, yeah. last week as well, and that is obviously saying that faith as well as grace, all of it is a gift yeah. of God. The entire act of salvation, even sanctification, is a gift of right. God. Mm -hmm. uh, the Spirit is the one who affects that. And this is where our Arminian brothers run into a big issue as yes, well. they do. Uh, because they do end up making faith a work. You have to exercise enough faith in a certain way. Now, we're not going to charge them with works-based salvation. They're right. not Romanists fully. Uh, they're not Roman Catholics, that is. But there's a big issue there. There is. Because there is a part that man has to play, which that is you have to have enough faith to trust in Jesus. Well, in a way, what they're doing is, and I grew up in, in, in many environments like that, mm -hmm. was, God is for me, the devil is against me, and I'm going to break the tie. Yep, yep. And that's not what the Bible teaches. Absolutely. It teaches that we're all dead. If you think about a dead person, a dead person can't do anything, can't talk to you, mm -hmm. can't shake your hand, cannot accept Christ as their Savior. Absolutely. Until God changes their heart, then they want to come. Mm -hmm. I used to tell my youth students that the only thing a dead body does is stink. Mm -hmm. And outside of Christ, that's all you do is you stink. That's all you can do. You just rot. So, yes, so therefore, Steve, do works play any factor in justification? Well, yes and no. I mean, not in the salvation aspect of it, but once you're justified and then you, and you've, you've repented of your sins and you're in Christ, works will play a part to prove that you've been justified. Mm -hmm. It's evidence of it. Absolutely. And so that's why I have a hard time with someone that would say, I, yeah, I, I accepted Christ as my Savior 10 years ago. I, I never read my Bible. I never go to church. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Well, no where way. are the works mm -hmm. to back that up? Absolutely. Christ said you should know them by their fruit. Right. Uh, so you can look at that and see evidence of a changed life. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. I've known plenty of people who want to say, well, I'm a carnal Christian, yes. and try to make that argument from the Scripture. And you know, John MacArthur did, dealt with that yeah, in the 80s, he and he was very, very clear that there is That's one of the best no I've thing. seen on that. And that is probably, that's, yeah, definitely one of the best I've seen on that, too. 
Uh, there's give them, no such give them thing. the name of that book. Yeah, it's the Gospel read. According to Jesus by John MacArthur. When I was born again, that was actually the first book that I was read. Was it really? Yeah, that was. I read Fantastic that one. Fantastic book. That one first, and then Calvin's Institutes of the Christian Religion next. So went head in first and then cracked my skull in the deep end of the pool. But uh, Gospel According to Jesus, though, is such a foundational yes. book, especially for Reformed Christianity. And, uh, you know, MacArthur calls it Lordship Salvation, mm-hmm. that faith is always accompanied by works. He even says in the book, I hate using that term, but that's the term that everyone's given me, so yeah. I've got to use it. Uh, but the fact is, is that you must accept by faith Jesus Christ as Lord and Master of your life. You cannot just accept him right. as God and say, that's it, I accept it, and then I have nothing else to do. But there, is, there are a number of what we would call good conservative churches mm-hmm. that hold to what the position you just talked about, yes. that, that there's a difference between the two. You could be mm-hmm. saved and not live the life and get to heaven. Yep. Yep. Having Christ as the Savior, but not your Lord. And, and the Bible doesn't, doesn't nope. make that. You're not being biblical at that point, yeah. absolutely. There is no one in the Bible who is truly born again and then doesn't have any works afterwards. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to get to a proof text here that says it's impossible to do so as well. Uh, just think of the example of Abraham. I mean, Abraham was justified, the Bible says, by faith. That's in Romans chapter 4. But it also says that he was proved to be justified by his works right. in James because he trusted mm-hmm. God even with his own son's life when God commanded him to bind Isaac. So we see that faith was working along with his works. He was justified by faith alone, of course, but he proved it by works. Right. So let's go ahead and jump into okay. our proof text right. then, Steve. So we've got a couple to do here today. So if you could, we're talking about justification by faith alone. If you would read John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Mm. Notice there, too, that big word, believe. Mm-hmm. They believed in his name. Therefore, because of that, he adopted them as sons. Which we're getting to. Which we're going to get to as well. That'll be chapter 12, which will be adoption, which is a high is point of the gospel. Week? That won't be next week. Next no, week. we've okay. got a couple oh, more right. weeks. Oh, that's right. We're just going yep. to. We've got a couple more weeks to go through justification, but that's the yeah. next. That comes with justification, though. You're justified, mm-hmm. and uh, you know a dear professor of mine gave a good example the other day yeah. that the judge proclaims you not guilty because of Christ's sacrifice, and in adoption, he gets off of the stand, opens his arms up, and says, Now you're my son. Come with me. That's a great picture. And that yeah. is a great picture. Mm-hmm. The judge doesn't just acquit you in justification. Mm-hmm. He doesn't adopts leave you, you as well. Doesn't yeah. leave you hanging. But let's keep talking about this, too. So I'm going to turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 28. And remember okay. that the Reformation hangs in large part on the book of Romans. Mm-hmm. This is yeah. where Luther was struggling with faith, with assurance, uh, with confession. I mean, the man spent hours upon hours, sometimes seven hours a day in the confessional booth. And sometimes the priest just had to say, Brother Martin, go home. Like I, he just got tired of him and sent him on. You know, and Luther said, I still wasn't feeling any yeah. better after that. But it was when he realized some of these verses, though, that were justified by faith alone. We read in verse 28, For we maintain that a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. There's nothing you can do. It is by faith alone that we're justified. Mm-hmm. Now, a Roman Catholic might say, well, where's the alone part in there? It's assumed in the apart from the works of the law. It's faith alone, apart from any other thing that you can do. It is only by faith that we're justified. So, And that we have to remember that. That's still even a big debate in the evangelical world, too, because we always go back to that in our human nature. There has to be something that I can do in order to, to justify myself. The Apostle Paul says, no. It's faith alone that does it. Faith in the one who has conquered the grave, and that's Christ. So, Steve, if you would, okay. keeping in Romans as well, turn to Romans chapter 5, verse 1 that's on this. Great chapter on justification. Go home and Absolutely. read it. Absolutely. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning that as an unbeliever, I was at war with God. Mm-hmm. You weren't neutral. Was, I wasn't neutral. God neutral. was angry with me. And I, even though I might not say it or out loud or know it to say mm-hmm. it, was at war with God and wanted nothing to do with God. Absolutely. And then having been justified, God as the judge says, you and I are now okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Through, through Jesus Christ. We're okay. I've been justified and I have peace with God. Absolutely. And that is a, if that isn't comforting, I don't know what is, right. that the heavenly judge says you're not guilty because of what he's done for you. He's taken the sentence. 
But we don't end there, of course. Yeah. So I'm going to turn to James chapter 2, verse yeah, 17. the other side. And, you know, this is the other side of it. Uh, Luther had some issues, of course, with James. He did. He called it yep. an epistle of straw yep. early that was on. Long, that was early in church yes. history. These guys were still working through so much. Yes, we, we're absolutely. on this side. We have the benefit of what they worked through. What they had to struggle through. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we understand that. And Luther walked that back later on, too, and he said, it's not as bad as I once thought. <laughs> But the the Roman Catholic Church took James and was beating him over the head with it, too, and said, well, James says, James says, James says. And Luther came back and said, well, Paul says, and the rest of the Bible says. So we have to understand, James, there's not a conflict here. Right. He is not saying that you're justified by works, and Paul is saying you're justified by faith. Uh, we'll see what he's getting at here okay. in James chapter 2, verse 17. Okay. We read, even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself which is what i was talking about about people saying they're christians and they don't read the bible they don't pray they don't come to church absolutely yeah. can that and james also says can that faith save him he even says you believe that god is one you do well the demons also believe yeah. and shudder just to have a bare faith with nothing else attached to it with nothing else that comes out of that faith isn't true saving faith in fact before we end to i'm going to read what the larger catechism says about justifying faith just okay. to get what the westminster standards are saying so we read justifying faith is is a saving grace wrought in the heart of a sinner by the Spirit and Word of God, whereby he being convicted of his sin and misery and of the disability in himself mm -hmm. and all other creatures to recover him out of his lost condition, not only assents to the truth of the promise of the gospel, but receives and rests upon Christ and his righteousness, therein held forth for pardon of sin and for the accepting and accounting of his person, righteous in the sight of God for salvation." Faith is always accompanied by works. A true justifying faith understands that. Abraham understood that. Moses understood that. The Apostle Paul understood that. Paul wasn't converted on the Damascus Way and then just went and did his merry business out in the desert. Oh, the man worked. He was the most effective evangelist who ever lived, too, I would argue. I mean, his work still lives on today, 2,000 years later. So, Steve, with that, I think that'll end okay. us for the day then on our topic of faith and justifying faith. So if you would, end us with Psalm chapter 62, verses 5 through 8. Okay. My soul, wait in silence for God only, for my hope is from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold, I shall not be shaken. On God my salvation and my glory rests. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Stop, listen, think about it. Mm. And think about that, too, throughout the coming week. Is God your rock and your salvation? Mm. Are you actively trusting in Christ and proving that you do trust him by working for him as well? Because we're not called to simply sit on the sidelines right. and idealistically gaze into our navels and philosophically contemplate the finer things of life. <laughs> We're called to work. You're called to be workers in the field for your master. And if you're doing that, then you have some fruit there. Right. So let's go and cultivate fruit then. Thanks for being with us here on our episode of Triple D today. So we appreciate your discussing our topic of justification and of the faith that does justify, that instrument by which God justifies us with. So thanks for being with us here today. Join us back next week. We'll continue our discussion of justification for another episode of Triple D. Thanks for being with us, and may God richly bless you and your family.